I am at Tata Motors stall at Bharat Mobility Global Expo 2025 and where it is all about EVs and I have the right person to talk about them, Mr. Anand Kulkarni. Thank you Hi. so much, Anand, for joining us. Pleasure. So, uh, I want to understand, I see a lot of EVs. What has been the theme for this stall uh, this year? The theme for this year is the future of mobility. So, Tata Motors is showing how we envision the future of mobility to take place in the uh, future. Uh, we've always uh, talked about safety. We've always been very, very focused on safety right from very early days. So that's one part of it. That's one pillar for us. But the second thing is, uh, India is uh, in a very adventurous mood, exploration mood. People want to go out. People want to explore. So the spirit of adventurism, the spirit of exploration is the second pillar. And the third one is all of us owe our responsibility to a sustainable future so that we leave this planet in better condition than what we acquired it. And therefore, these are the three pillars for us in the future of mobility. And that's what we are showcasing today through our concepts of the future for electrics, through our multi-powertrain strategy, through cars that we have already done and what we are going to do in the future. You know, um, since we are standing next to Avenia X, let's just talk about Avenia X first. Uh, we saw the Avenia um, about two years back Correct. and it uh, it was a fabulous product. But this looks exceptional. It's quite big and uh, very um, imposing, as you said, and also looks striking with the way the rear has been designed. So is w what is the idea behind uh, Avenia X? Uh, what are your thoughts? What are your plans about it? So the Avenia platform is something that espouses uh, wellness. It espouses performance. It espouses sophistication, minimalism, and uh, the right level of uh, comfort for a product. It's going to be a, a completely global premium uh, electric, born electric uh, vehicle. And that's the platform that we are uh, uh, using from JLR also. Uh, the Avenia Concept X, therefore, is a further expression of that similar concept uh, in, a, uh, in a completely different body style, something that evokes aspiration, something that evokes uh, a sense of performance. So if you look at the tight lines that uh, Martin has been able to, Martin and his team have been able to create, I think it's absolutely stunning. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so will this come to uh, on production line as well one day? So we are showing this as a concept. Yeah. I think let's get feedback. Yeah. Uh, this is a wonderful place to get feedback from people. Yeah. And uh, let's understand what people think about this. Yeah. And then uh, uh, we will see how it uh, takes a natural course of development. You know, you surprised everybody when Harrier uh, came on the stage with, without any driver, driverless car. With a summon <laughs> mode, yes. Yeah. So, uh, what's, what's that? Uh, uh, what, so, what is the strategy? What is the technology in it? So the Harrier EV uh, is built on the Active EV Plus platform. Uh, we, last year we showcased our Active EV platform, yeah. which is a pure e electric vehicle platform. And uh, uh, that was done first on the punch. Then we also introduced the Curve last year. The Harrier EV is the third product on that. It's very close to production now. Yeah. And it will be launched in the first quarter of the next financial, uh, financial year. Uh, but essentially, uh, we have redefined the plus in the Active EV stands for the redefinition and uh, further uh, enhancement of the, uh, each of the features in those layers. So when we talk about the electrical architecture, we have uh, integrated it with uh, automated park assist functionality as well as some access and uh, ingress uh, mm -hmm. functionalities which we haven't spoken about today. Okay. But one of the possibilities of the uh, automated park assist is a summon mode. Mm -hmm. So if your car is uh, sort of wedged in a very narrow parking spot where you cannot open the doors, it is possible to summon the car All so right. that it can come out and present itself. Okay. And uh, that I think is a extremely usable, extremely useful feature uh, for very crowded uh, parking spaces that we have in the country. Yeah. And uh, that was an expression of that. But I think I'm glad that you've liked it. <laughs> you know, um, Harrier EV is something that uh, market has been talking about for a long time. They've yes. been wanting it. Uh, it will come with all wheel drive. It will come with four wheel drive. So um, when can we expect it to on road? So uh, as the car that we have seen today uh, is in uh, advanced stages of development. And we want to make sure that we absolutely uh, have uh, 
ironed out all the aspects of it to write down to the finest details. I think uh, uh, while we are not declaring the date, today was an unveil yeah. uh, rather than or a reveal rather than yeah. a launch. But I think uh, the first quarter of the next financial year, uh, we should be able to see this car. And what about Sierra EV? Because again, uh, well, people uh, love the <laughs> name Sierra, you know. Yeah, the Sierra name uh, sort of brings back nostalgia. Yeah. Because I'm sure uh, the, all of us, uh, you know, at least in my generation, we sort of uh, grew up driving the older Sierra yeah, and it was or looking up to it. <laughs> uh, it was very, very adventurous yeah. and uh, romantic as well. So yeah. it, it's got very, very strong imagery. Uh, the new Sierra that we have showcased today uh, brings back that uh, imagery along with the sophistication and the modern, uh, modern sort of lines that we have come to expect today. Mm -hmm. Uh, we aren't declaring the date for that, but all that we would say is uh, it is uh, close to, uh, it is actually in a great stage of development right now and we, sh we will announce it uh, at a suitable time. All right. Uh, now, um, when we when we are seeing all these EVs coming from you, uh, they come with a lot of tech, with a lot of new features, uh, but competition is also catching up very yes. fast, very, very fast, uh, both in terms of tech, in terms of pricing, in terms of uh, mm -hmm. what they are offering. Uh, you have been a market leader till now uh, in the EV space because, first of all, you were the only one Correct. at one point in time and then you had that uh, uh, that positive reinforcement from, from customers as well. True. So now that competition this year is going to increase so much, uh, how do you see the landscape of uh, of EV changing market, EV market changing, and what are you going to do so that you remain on top of the uh, of this? Uh, you are absolutely share? right. You are absolutely right that we've been uh, sort of pioneering in terms of our efforts over the last four, five years, six years uh, to bring out firstly to bring out a credible EV. Uh, which was with the Nexon EV and then we followed it up with uh, multiple products. Yeah. We've uh, advanced our tech, we've advanced our architectures to be able to give a wider variety uh, of choices to our customers so that not only, uh, so we are the only company today, Mugda, uh, which does uh, uh, electric products right from 8 lakh rupees uh, to 22 lakh rupees, yeah. uh, from the Tiago to the Curve. Yeah. And uh, we, we are committed to this because we think uh, this is the ultimate uh, solution in uh, our pursuit of uh, improvement of uh, the uh, environment. environmental yeah. concerns that our country has. As and well and as even fuel, fuel, uh, fuel, fuel, fuel dependence, etc. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So this is the ultimate solution. Now, uh, there are more people now who have also uh, understood and adopted this uh, approach and we actually are uh, extremely welcoming of that because we think that this will create more awareness, this will create more options for people and hopefully it should help the entire market grow. Now when the entire market grows, we as leaders and we as people who have the, uh, the highest number of products, uh, it would be but natural for us to benefit from this. So we look at it very, very positively. Uh, so, you know, uh, market leader Bharati Suzuki has launched their, not, uh, not launched, but unveiled their, their uh, EV, Evitara. Um, how significant uh, do you think uh, that can be in, uh, because it's a mass market player, something that they, they have been doing it for a long time. First of all, what is your reaction on Evitara? So I haven't uh, yet seen, seen the, uh, because I, we didn't, uh, uh, I mean, we've been busy all day with yeah. uh, what's been happening at our pavilion. Uh, but I think it's a, it's a great step. And uh, I just hope that, uh, like I said, it creates the right level of uh, curiosity, right, right level, it pikes the interest of the customers. And that's going to just be so, so positive for the entire uh, segments, for the yeah, entire, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because after that, uh, it, it will also mean that more people uh, uh, get committed to improving the infrastructure. More, com uh, more people uh, get committed to building uh, better infrastructure on the highways or in remote places as well. And that's going to be absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. Do you think you will, uh, uh, you will be able to maintain your market share from here on? I think with, with what we have done and uh, learned over the last five, six years, we've got a significant lead. Yeah. Uh, we also have the highest number of products. We have a very high degree of localization, which has meant that the uh, availability of tech uh, is local and uh, therefore there's more control Master. over the entire uh, value chain. Uh, this is certainly a head start for us. Now, uh, nobody can take it for granted, yeah. uh, but I think uh, we, we have it in us 
uh, what it needs to maintain the leadership. All right. Uh, you know, uh, let's focus on Curve EV, which is your last uh, EV that uh, we saw coming from you. Uh, how has the response been from Curve on Curve EV? Are you happy with the response? And uh, what are your expectations from this year? The Curve EV actually combined two uh, aspects. One is a, a body style that was not familiar to the Indian market. And along with that was the combination of a 400 kilometers real life range and a great performance. I think the uh, general uh, perception to the product has been that of appreciation of the body style, appreciation of the way that we've packaged it. And therefore people are enjoying it uh, in the way that we had anticipated it. Uh, the pe penetration levels of uh, all electric cars uh, today at uh, Tata Motors portfolio level is at 12 to 13 percent. Mm -hmm. We see uh, a similar or a slightly better percentage with the curve EV which goes to show that once you hit the parity point then the adoption rates will be significant. And that's what I think is a redeeming factor of uh, the Curve EV. Mm -hmm. You know, um, EV space, the battery uh, um, battery technology is all changing very rapidly. Uh, you, are, you keenly watch this space. What are those technologies that you think are uh, going to stand out? Where is the, where is the uh, cell and battery uh, tech, tech progressing what are so, what, what are the, the key te technologies uh, that you think are going to rise up uh, going ahead from here in the last 5 6 years uh, you are absolutely correct again that there's been a significant dynamism and a, a rapid evolution of technology yeah. uh, be it in the uh, space of propulsion be it in the space of power electronics or be it in the case of batteries battery prices have fallen down significantly so if you compare it with 2010, for example, battery prices have fallen down to uh, uh, below 90-95% of what it used to be at that particular point of time. Uh, what does this mean? It allows people to access electric vehicles at a significantly more affordable and accessible price point. But along with that, technology has, uh, engineers have also developed ways and means to make the batteries longer. So in the same footprint of the car, engineers have found out a way to package more energy. Mm -hmm. So you, it means, it just means that there is a higher ability of engineering or engineers to give more solutions at a affordable price point. So this is one significant aspect that has happened. Mm -hmm. The second thing is on the power electronics and the propulsion, there is a trend of combination, combining everything together, yeah. which not only reduces the packaging uh, uh, space, but it also reduces the cost of redundancy. And therefore, it makes it further more affordable. And which is why you find that achieving parity has been possible with these two or three things happening. All that it means is you can just have better and better cars and it becomes more and more, uh, uh, I mean, it's commonsensical now to be able to shift to electric vehicles. Yeah. And I, I see that in the last few uh, quarters, this trend to have really inflected positively and the growth, uh, of course, with the right level of awareness that we mentioned about with more products coming in, yeah. I think uh, we are standing at a point where uh, there is a very high likelihood of growth happening in electric vehicles. You know, one uh, aspect of uh, EVs is the uh, is the battery uh, life cycle. Yes. Uh, and you are going to face that a lot sooner from your other competitors because you were the pioneer. So now uh, lots of batteries will also uh, age. So now what is your plan for, I know you already have a scrappage uh, company Policy, as yeah. well, uh, a scrappage company as well, which is scrapping EVs too. So um, uh, how are you uh, making sure that customers uh, know when when is the battery uh, ready for, for scrappage or recycling? And what is your recycling strategy for, ba uh, for batteries? So let's break this uh, things into two parts. Yeah. Firstly, uh, we provide a eight year and we right at the beginning, we provided for a eight year, one lakh 60,000 kilometers yeah. warranty on the battery. So uh, it's been only four and a half, five years for now. And therefore, those batteries are not necessarily at the point where they need to be replaced. Uh, in fact, I would say with all the data that we are collecting, most of the batteries are doing reasonably well. People have covered 100,000 kilometers. A lot of people, 25% of our people have now done more than 50,000 kilometers. Okay. That's a lot of running. Yeah. And uh, batteries haven't uh, really uh, shown signs of uh, rapid aging or different aging. Uh, six years uh, earlier, there was no data. Yeah. And therefore, we were in a slightly uh, speculation, blind spot, blind spot yeah. kind of a thing. 
but nonetheless we recognize that eventually this will happen so we have set up uh, battery recycling facilities and capabilities along with companies such as loham or nunan and uh, uh, these companies uh, have piloted in fact if you see on our stall we've shown today the second use of batteries the possibilities and these companies have uh, helped us do this so my request is uh, do have a look at how uh, they have done it mm -hmm. so it's possible and we are making those advances in terms of how batteries can be reused recycled or repurposed one uh, concern that customers have the people who have not shifted to evs is the second hand uh, market where uh, they they feel because of this 8 year uh, uh, warranty uh, number uh, people get apprehensive that you know 8 years later my battery is not going to have any value then my car is not going to have any value the second hand market will not give me give enough money back uh, there will be no value left so how how are you uh, trying to make sure that that kind of uh, joy uh, that um, niggling fear that people have in their mind uh, gets resolved two things again so we we are providing for 8 years uh, let's say people change after 4 or, or 5 years and that's the resale value i think within the 3 4 5 years whatever time that you may choose there is a significant depreciation of the original uh, car and uh, because of this it's it's possible for people to get the same performance because uh, an electric vehicle does not deteriorate uh, over in, in terms of an age the battery ages mm -hmm. to a certain extent but uh, uh, the rest of the car uh, the propulsion or the power electronics doesn't really uh, have a large uh, deterioration so you get the same kind of performance at a significantly reduced price which actually makes a great cost of ownership uh, equation however the second part what do i do after 3 years when the warranty runs down yeah. is uh, real uh, people do have apprehensions about it and that's where i think we need to create more awareness about the fact that there could be extended warranties people can adopt that and uh, get into a degree of safety the second thing is uh, we we also would want to work with solutions where an alternate battery at the much cheaper prices that are prevalent today compared to the point that it was done earlier becomes accessible so multiple solutions can work mm -hmm. and it these are being made to work as we speak yeah. and uh, that's what i think will help people all right thank you so much anand thank you very much mukta nice talking to you Thank you.